Hi everyone, here's the Book Chemist once again. Today I'm reviewing Richard Powers' The Overstory, a massive, epic endeavor that reminded me a lot of Moby Dick in how it tries at once to convey the full variety of human experience while also marveling at one specific privileged topic, uh, the same way Moby Dick does with whales. In the overstory, the topic of choice is botany and the world of trees in particular. In fact, I should say that trees are not just a simple subject, a simple topic that Powers decided to focus on in the overstory. Uh, starting with its punny but winning title, the overstory makes the case that trees are not just one single thing that we can choose to, to consider and to, to look at. Instead, trees are the very fabric of life. They are the engines of the world as we know it. One of the novel's central concerns is stressing and highlighting time and again how deeply connected our existence is to trees in so many different ways. When we think of the world, as in the world that is currently threatened by pollution, uh, the world that is threatened by uh, global warming. What we're really talking about is a very specific and fairly narrow thing, mainly uh, contemporary society or the broad well-being of humankind. Whereas the world is actually something much broader and much vaster than us, much vaster than our civilizations. And the novel remarks on how important it is that we start to understand how broad the world is and how interconnected the life that um, inhabits Earth really is, uh, interconnected and uh, dependent on each other, on all the various elements that compose the biosphere, all of this uh, is something we are just we have just started to discover, something we have just started to comprehend. There is a very beautiful crossroads here, a very beautiful intersection that the novel is highly aware of. The fact that the tenets of ecology and the tenets of fiction are actually very similar and, and the central message of both of these things is that everything is connected in the end. As I just said, ecology does teach us how each species, each um, um, each part of an ecosystem is dependent on another in the same way as fiction teaches us how our story is dependent on the other characters that share our same narrative in order to even be a story. The Odyssey is the story of Ulysses, but it's also the story of all the men who travel with him, the women he meets on his journeys. Uh, Dante's Inferno wouldn't exist without the characters he meets going through. Hell, in some ways, no, even though he is the one narrating the story, in the same way as we see the world through our own perspective. The world itself wouldn't exist without all the other elements that compose it and that are all interconnected to one another. As a fact, it is as easily understood as it is hard to fully grasp in its full and endless implications. And the overstory looks at it through a variety of perspective, uh, perspectives, through a very vast set of characters who uh, all bring something different to this story, this story about people who um, come to care very much for trees for one reason or another. Uh, some of the characters in this story are psychologists, for instance, who uh, are determined to study the reasons why we cannot see, we sometimes literally cannot see, what is all around us and the ways in which our actions are dooming or ruining our prospects and our futures. Uh, some other characters are computer developers, dreaming of creating virtual worlds that would capture the same native innocence and, and beauty of our own Earth. The overstory is obsessed with trees. It remarks insistently on all the wooden objects and on every item of vegetable origin in each of the scenes uh, that it goes through, and it uses um, tree-related metaphors, uh, similes, um, uh, figures of speech in general, all the time, and the accumulation of all this language could easily have felt overdone or exaggerated, but it doesn't. Instead, what it does is uh, training us, training me at least, to see how central trees, how central wood 
are to all we do, to the items we use, to the commodities we've come to take for granted, to our existence, both as a species and as individuals living in the modern world. The overstory also strikes really hard to strike a balance between uh, scientific and humanistic culture. These two branches of culture, of academia even, that always used to be the same thing historically, but that appear so very separate from one another these days in the contemporary world. Uh, as a novel, it shines with a deep love for scientific research and pursuit. Uh, one of the character remarks that the only dependable things are humility and looking, which is a very beautiful uh, guiding principle for empirical science, uh, I think. Uh, but the book is also deeply aware of the nature of human emotions, of the way the human mind works, of the way the human spirit and humans as social creatures work, interact with one another. It's also intelligent enough as a novel to know that both of these cultures can create their own monsters uh, and are full of hubris uh, in their own way, uh, whether it's scientists humiliating one of them out of her field because of her daring theories, or an English teacher in an elementary school bullying a kid because he failed to appreciate the book that she assigned to the class um, uh, for reading. The Overstory is a very, very American book. It's a eulogy for the lost forests of the United States and North America, and it, at times it is almost scolding in its love and indignation for this exploited landscape. Uh, it reminded me, other than Moby Dick, it reminded me very much of Steinbeck. Uh, that's probably the author I would, uh, that came to mind most, most strongly for me. In, both in the very deep love for the American landscape and for American potential that is evident in the novel, and because of this indignation at the way the landscape and the people living there have been exploited by power, by the market, and by other pernicious forces. Another aspect of the overstory that is very American and that maybe rubbed me the wrong way at times is that this feels to me like a very puritanical book. Um, you have fun-loving youths who are redeemed by visions and decide to give up their lives of uh, dissolution and uh, become heroes and, and martyrs for trees. Uh, you have scientists preserving the beauties and the bounties of the natural world against the bulk of sinful humanity. Uh, you even have a, a wayward couple who are brought back together into marriage by the power of trees. Even the artist character in the book is motivated by this constant urge to keep working, keep making things, to keep earning his living. Even the final paragraph of the book is concerned with this idea of earning uh, your position, your, um, your salvation, I guess. Uh, I don't tend to like puritanical views in general, even when they are in service of uh, obviously a commendable um, ideal, such as the ideal of preserving the natural world and living in harmony with nature. Power's writing is also certainly virtuosistic, but at times it felt to me just a little bit self-serving, uh, an example that comes to mind is where he describes a, a shit-eating shit grin as a coprophagic grin. Uh, at times it's a little bit too fussy to be cute, it gets a little bit too technical, too scientific. I will say here though, as a full disclaimer, that I'm not sure whether my problem, as small as it is, is with Powers writing itself, or whether I've just maybe grown away a little bit from this type of uh, contemporary writing, which is, is very common in contemporary American writing in particular. The overstory is a compelling, deeply intelligent and hugely admirable story about the importance for our own good and for our own survival of getting to know and to appreciate and understand the bounties of life all around us. It's easy to mourn the loss of medical advancement that the destruction of the natural world is causing, 
some of the species of tree or the species of plant that go extinct every day, some of those might hold the key to curing cancer or to the next power drug that might help millions of people across the world. But this loss also comes with a much subtler but equally important loss of understanding. We are losing an opportunity to, to appreciate these different type of life that exists alongside us, exists over and above and below us. And by losing the opportunity to connect with it, to appreciate how interconnected all of us are, how much we depend on them, we are losing the chance to create a better and, and less horrifying future for, our, for all of us. And reaching out to it and trying to appreciate the interconnectedness of it all is an incredibly important pursuit for all of us on an individual and collective basis. The other story makes that clear in a much more elaborate and intelligent and artistic and beautiful way and I'm sure I haven't done much justice to it but I really appreciated it as a novel. I thought it was truly engaging especially in its first half and I'm really curious to hear what you thought of it. Um, I know it's become extremely popular uh, in the last few years. Uh, I can see why. Uh, are you among the Overstory's many fans? Did you have any uh, problems, any issues with the book at all? Really curious to talk about it in the comments, as always. Thank you so much for watching the review. Thank you to my patrons for supporting the YouTube channel. That's really awesome. And bye, everybody.